This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Keller's Garden Center and Landscaping Services. Are you still cutting your own grass? Are you still trying to get your landscaping to look perfect on your own? That sounds sweaty. That sounds like a lot of work. That sounds like a job for Keller's Garden Center and Landscaping Services. Family owned and operated Keller's Garden Center and Landscaping Services located on Kern Street in Exeter near Blue Ribbon Dairy has the quality and experience to get your yard looking its best. The Garden Center offers plants, trees, sod, mulch, rocks, flowers, topsoil, grass seed, straw bales, and much more while the Lawn and Landscaping Services offers mowing, trimming, planting, and full landscaping. Visit them on their social media pages for more info. Keller's Garden Center and Landscaping Services. Get your free estimate today. Welcome to the PopGo Project Podcast, a platform for the discussion and discovery of arts and entertainment. We focus on highlighting people and events that add value to the world around us. Visit us on all social media platforms by searching The PopGo Project or visit our website at thepopgoproject.com. Welcome to the show and thank you so much for listening. And we're live on the Pop Go Project podcast with Alex. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Not too bad. Did you get your lottery tickets? No, I keep thinking about it and then I just get distracted, but I should. <laughs> it's nine o'clock on Friday. It's going to be called in like two hours. Oh, shit. I, honestly, I have the worst luck. So like, <laughs> I don't even bother with those things, but like, it would be nice. <laughs> Yeah, one point some billion dollars. I mean, oh, damn. you can't win if you don't play. That is true. I almost forgot. I won't win either. That's why I don't gamble. I don't gamble because I always lose. Oh, I tried to gamble when I went to Atlantic City once and I lost like $10 in maybe five minutes. And I was like, nope, yep. I'm done. Out. I have it since. <laughs> Out. Out. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Um, glad to have you on. Um, the uh, I think the algorithms and your social media uh, kind of aligned us. I don't know if you were doing sponsored posts or you know just kind of uh, you know whatever, however you know you do it on social media, but uh, you popped up in my news feed. Uh, mm-hmm. Something I would I would uh, I might like, and for once in my life, uh, the algorithms played a, a good part in. It's sending you my way, so I, I, you know, checked you out, and I was like, "Wow, this is this is great stuff." Thank you. So yeah, and you are a, a vocalist. I believe you're from uh, Rockland County. Yep, New York. New York. Very cool. Very cool. So, um, you know, I know you you, you do a lot of covers and and things like that, but you also have uh, some of your own material out there as well. But uh, tell me who Alex is. So Alex, um. I don't know. I basically, I love writing music and I like, I grew up doing theater. So I grew up like singing other people's songs and I always had a passion for like poetry when I was younger. And I just like, as I was auditioning for things and stuff, I was always like writing my own music and I always wanted to be in a band. So I was like, I could never do that. I do theater because for some reason I was like, you can't do both. So, um, you know, I just got to a point in my life where I was like, okay, I've been doing this for so long. Like now let's actually do really like where my heart is as cheesy as that sounds. And then, um, I had a couple projects here and there. And then I was like, you know what? I just, I want to write my music. I want to give my message out. So I started with a single called taking over. And then that whole song was basically like, I'm unhappy. Like I need to do something more with my life. And it just like sparked this whole band. And like, I say it's like a project, but it is a band, but it's my name. So it gets confusing, but um, yeah. So it just like, just kind of spiraled and it's been almost, almost four years, but the pandemic, I feel like it's been three because it didn't count. <laughs> Those two years didn't count, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What a wild two years that was. Ugh, let's not go through that again. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm i so sick of talking about it, but I feel like it was such a not important part of our lives, but uh, just a huge part of our lives. It's yeah. like, if we don't talk about it, if we don't address it and, you know, make sure we got we got through it okay, it's like, 
you know, what are we doing? But yeah, it impacted everybody in different ways. Yeah. I mean, so obviously as a, as a musician, you know, um, I talked to a lot of them and a lot of them came, came out of it pretty good because a lot of them did the right thing and they kind of took the time away from, you know, touring and, and playing shows because they couldn't and just kind of like hunkered down, um, self-reflected, wrote some great songs. And, and how did that play out for you? Yeah. So I ended up like creating like a little recording studio in my house. Cause I was like, well, I can't Perfect. go anywhere. I might as well do it here. And then I redid my room. Like this is my bedroom. <laughs> like I was went through Like, I don't know. I had a lot of time, like you said, I had a lot of time to myself where I could do things that I couldn't have done normally where I'm just always running around. Um, I felt like I definitely, you know, honed my craft and I just learned more about myself and my like musical taste and things like that. So honestly, I kind of flourished in quarantine. Um, but, you know, I know everybody had it differently and a lot of people were going through you know, hardships, but I am very fortunate that I kind of enjoyed it weirdly well not all of it but some of it sure of course yeah it's it's you know a lot of people you know who, who aren't musicians but you know just people in general kind of did a lot of self-reflecting i have to say they started um lifting up the, the rugs in their homes and then you know saw there's a lot of dirt and just kind of cleaned their lives up and took care of what they needed to that they didn't have time to take care of uh prior um Obviously, financially and, and you know, mental health wise for people it was uh, an absolute nightmare. But a lot of people came out on top, especially Jeff Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of time, like it was bad. I just I was ordering things like every week. I don't even know why. I think it was like almost like a compulsion. I was just like, I need to buy something like something new has to happen. So I just, I, I went nuts. <laughs> I think it was during the pandemic when uh, I said that my wife hit the uh, delivery uh, trifecta. It was UPS, uh, FedEx, and Amazon all in the same day. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, what are we doing? <laughs> then you get to a point, like, it gets delivered. You're like, what the did I buy? Like, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. And now we're, she just did that again. <laughs> just recently uh and i mean it's not her fault but just like i said to you uh before when we were setting this up i we just had a baby uh three weeks ago congratulations oh thank you very much um wild um but yeah so there's constantly stuff being delivered to the house whether it's my wife buying it or we've been very fortunate where people and friends have uh you know sent stuff our way so yeah. I mean, I love I love the uh, ability to get things the next day, but I feel like Amazon, like just that that instant gratification, is seeping into other facets of life that like we just can't keep up with. That's true. That's so. very interesting. I feel like yeah. I mean, just technology in general, like everybody wants things now, instant, like immediately. Um, like even like TikTok. So I know TikTok had a new thing where it's like you can post like up to 10 minute videos and i was like people don't even want to watch like a 15 second video like no one's gonna watch a 10 minute video <laughs> but yeah thanks again for doing this because i mean i don't know how many people are gonna watch it because their attention spans are so small <laughs> i uh are you a big tiktoker i go through phases i hate making tiktoks i feel like i'm i don't know I could be doing something else with that time, but I, you know, I'm not going to lie. I scroll through TikTok. I end up on like weird. I usually end up like a comedy TikTok or like fail army TikTok or like falling and stuff. But um, rarely I don't end up on like music TikTok, which is weird, but. Yeah. It's such a, it's so much fun, but what a time suck. It's, yeah. such, it's such a bad thing. I have a bad habit of, you know, that's the, one of the first things I do, uh, well, before my daughter was born, one of the first things I would, I would do in the morning would I would grab my phone and, you know, start opening social media, which is terrible, but, I do. <laughs> um, but I'm like, yeah, you know, I have like these kettlebells next to my bed that I said I was going to start using every day. And I'm like, if I, if I spent the amount of time with these kettlebells that I spent on TikTok every morning, <laughs> I wouldn't be fat. <laughs> you know you gotta do it. you gotta be like going for a walk while you're on tiktok yeah, on the or something then i'll trip and fall and i'll hurt myself it's not gonna be a good thing but are you worried about china taking taking your data i've gotten to a point where like 
I feel like all my data is everywhere anyway. Everywhere, right? I mean, they can hack into my iCloud if they really wanted to. I mean, it's not very entertaining. It's really a bunch of like selfies and random pictures of like raccoons or something, but. <laughs> raccoons? All right. They're so cute. I have this, I'm obsessed with raccoons. So sometimes people just will send me like raccoon memes or like videos. And then I save them. Because yeah. they're cute. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, that's funny. <laughs> they are cute. My, uh, a friend of mine actually has one as a pet. You're not supposed to, but he does. Are you serious? Oh, I'm so jealous. Like, okay. I don't want it as a pet because I feel like it'll destroy my house, but I just like want to hang out with one. For, it like, might. Let me see if I can find uh, a picture of it, but it's adorable. There's like a cafe or, or coffee. I don't know. Some place. It's not here where they're like raccoons. And they just like run around. Really? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't remember what country it was in, but uh, I've, people have sent me those videos before. Well, that makes sense. Cause you like raccoons. I've never heard of that before. I've heard there's a place that just opened up around here. It's a it's a cat cafe. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, oh, it's like the cat. Okay, so it's the same concept except with raccoons. Right. <laughs> I don't think he has any like posted. He'll share stories because obviously stories go away. Right. I don't think he has any that you can kind of like. Oh, this guy has a raccoon, so they can't come find him. But uh, yeah, it's adorable. What's its name? Honestly, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I would probably name it Rocket. Rocket? Yeah, like Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> I'm not into that, but mm-hmm. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Like I, I'm like I'm old school. Like I like the original Batman's with like Michael Keaton, and like I feel like all these superhero movies and things like that these days is just it's over my head. It's like too. It's just too much. It's too sci-fi for me. Yeah, I mean, I. I'm trying to think like the first, you know, like obviously the Michael Keaton, like Batman, like that was classic. And then, you know, the Spider-Man, what I came in like 2001 with like Tobey Maguire or somewhere around there. And those were good. And then they're just getting like too, like Dr. Strange just came out. I have zero interest in saying that. Like I just just feel like it's getting weird. It's like too much CGI and I don't know what it is. It's just, it's. No, I agree. I guess my age is showing to an extent, so. What are you gonna do? I feel like if you have too much CGI and they're like, oh, look what we can do. It's like, okay, well, if the plot and the storyline isn't there, I mean, it's a comic book. You're supposed to have a storyline. It's like literally what it is. Right. But no, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. But we mentioned technology. Um, you're, you're a musician who, um, you know, obviously started her career when we had all these streaming services at our fingertips, right? Yes. How do you feel about those services do, do, i mean do you use them to your advantage i mean do you um you know not only spotify but also you know the social media and being able to target people and kind of get yourself out there in front of people who you know are interested in you in what you do but it's like i mean i grew up with cds and even cassettes when i was very young um i'm not sure how old you are you, you look very young so you, you've probably maybe seen cds and obviously you have the streaming services how how does how do you integrate those into what you do? Yeah, well, no, I grew up with like VHS and like cassette tapes and stuff. Okay. Um, I even have over here, like I have actual CDs, like all lined up. Like I still have them. I like tangible things. Um, it's just, it's, it's weird. You know, back in the day, you would put together an album and you ever like whatever. And then you would sell that and people would want the physical copy of something and you play shows and that's how you got, you know, your fan base. And now everything is virtual. So it's like, okay, so now it's not like, you don't just have to do that aspect. Now you have to like create all this content around it. Like you can't just like put out a song. Like you have to have the making of the song, the behind the scenes, like the photo shoot, the behind the scenes of the photo shoot. So you have to like basically like direct your own life, which is very strange to think about. But like people are talking about instant gratification. People always want something now they want to say what are you doing now what are you doing now it's like can get a lot but also um like we're talking about people's attention span so as an independent artist like for me it makes more sense to put out singles more constantly consistently sorry um versus like spending i don't know six months seven months or a year on an album where if you give that to someone they're gonna listen to it and be like okay this is you know great love it whatever moving on like a month later when's the next song so it's, I think, more so about having consistent content than working on like an album, which is completely different from, 
you know, back in the day, like when I first like got into like music in general. So it's just, it's a, it's, it's weird. Cause like, you know, when you grow up seeing something you're like, okay, that's what I'm going to do. And then you get there and you're like, everything you just learned, throw it out the window, try something new. So, yeah. I mean, and that's how fast technology changes. It's like this wild thing. I hate it. <laughs> I, I, I was buying CDs up until I think, oh, maybe it was when, I, when my son was born uh, a few years ago, just because like I would go to the record store, buy CDs. I, it, if I wasn't there to find something in particular, I would just get something random based on the cover art, which is so cool right yeah but i just got to a point where i'm, I'm spending 100 bucks a week which is you know 400 bucks a month and i'm like i have a mouth to feed now and it's like maybe this isn't the smartest thing so i i sucked it up and you know converted to to spotify but i mean i miss i miss that i miss um yeah at one point it was on every tuesday there was new music releases now it's every friday um but that was such, such a cool part of the week for me you know it's like yeah. and i'm sure as a musician like putting that collection together and, and having that art and having like you said a tangible thing to kind of touch and feel like does that bum you out now that it's not <laughs> that way um yes and no so i have an ep that i released in like middle of like 2018 and i went and like got cds and like i went crazy like there's like a poster on the inside i did all this like crazy artwork and stuff and it was expensive and I thought it was really cool. And then I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to do this for like every release. Like that's kind of crazy unless I have like a label or someone like backing me up financially. Um, so it was really cool. So very, very rarely people ask for like CDs or something tangible. So I will still like sell them that. Um, so I do miss that aspect of it, but it is one less stressor on me. <laughs> So like sure. that, that aspect of it, but that makes sense. yeah, yeah. I just I don't know. I think what what's cool about how things are now, where you release singles every six weeks, whatever it might be. I mean, going back to the instant gratification, I like being able to get new things from my favorite artists on a regular basis, which is really neat. But I also miss the fact that you know your art, the artist would take their time, put together a ten. 12 song album and they would record it you know in a way that you should listen to it from start to finish yeah. um where now it's just kind of like here's a new song yeah it's funny because like if you look at like older bands like that have been around since like the early 2000s or just like well i'm trying to think anything like i think pre like 2008 even most of those bands like they have the albums and i think Actually, maybe a lot more rock bands still have like the album, but like all the new people coming in, they're doing EPs, they're doing singles. It's not really like that. Actually, maybe it's just been the past couple of years that I've really noticed it, but they don't do the albums anymore. Right. But, like I love when bands that I listen to like have new albums. I'm like, yes, I get so excited. And obviously like I buy the tangible one because I like to. And um, yeah, I just, I feel like now no one, like the newer people up and coming don't really do that anymore. Even like in like the pop world, I think just musicians in general. Yeah. I just think it's like what you said. And it's, it's very expensive to do all that. Um, and, and we're living in a world where there's a 24 hour news cycle. So I just, everything is just like, okay, this is, this is cool today. It's, it's gone tomorrow. What's next? What's next? What's next? So. Exactly. And that's why like I've been doing covers too. Cause I'm like, it's at least it's something, first of all, they're fun. And yeah. Let's, let's get into that. I mean, yeah. Uh, I'll go on a list here. Um, uh, you had one with Breaking Benjamin, who, um, uh, shameless plug, I'm very good friends with Aaron Brock from, from Breaking Ben. Awesome. Uh, and then past, past members are from where I live. Um, you know, Aaron lives like 10 minutes from me. Um, Motionless and White, also from uh, my area. Um, but you have Flyleaf, and uh, you did a cover of Justin Bieber. Um, Christina Aguilera um you know when you choose to do um like a cover I mean are these people that you've looked up to over the years and that you admire or is it just kind of that's what's in your wheelhouse and that you kind of are, are comfortable with how does that all play out so it depends so I do work with my friend Chris and sometimes like the Justin Bieber one he had um composed that whole 
cover and he was like, this is really cool. Like, would you want to sing on it? So sometimes it's something that he has done when I do collaborations with him. Uh, when I do things on my own, it's more so that it's like a song. Uh, literally, I don't plan it. I just hear a song and then I just envision it a certain way. Like the one um, masterpiece by um, Motionless and White. I heard that and then I just heard like an orchestration in my head. Now it sounds kind of weird when I say that out loud, but I just like heard this whole piece. So then I was like, I have to cover this. And like, again, people with short attention spans, I'm like, I'm, I'll just do like a, you know, the first verse and chorus up to the end and then I'll do that. Um, and it was pretty well received, which is cool. But yeah, I just sometimes like I'll hear a song and like, I just, I hear it a different way and I want to try it and, or like I get influenced by the song itself. And who, uh, what kind of bands um, kind of uh, inspire you? So, I mean, Flyleaf was a huge inspiration. Evanescence, um, Three Days Grace, Breaking Benjamin was a huge influence. So that kind of, like that realm, that's pretty much when, I'm trying to think. I was like, I think I was like 10 or 11 when Fallen came out. Maybe it was nine, I don't know, but I was young. And especially like Evanescence hearing that, because it was the first time I heard someone who was like singing hard rock, but had like almost like an operatic voice. And I don't have an operatic voice, but I have more of that vibrato, like theater side. So hearing that it was like, oh, like maybe I could, I could do this. And then it just kind of evolved from there. Yeah. That's no, cool. Like all these covers that you've done, they're very well done, obviously. And then um, they're just bands that I've been, you know, a huge fan of over the years. And it must be, um, it's probably kind of cool to be able to, I don't want to say it's easy copying someone's song, but like having that blueprint already set out, the lyrics and, and being able to just kind of take that and, and put your twist on it. That's got to be a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. Especially when I'm taking a song that is not stereotypically like an orchestra it's more so like a hard rock song. So like trying to put my, cause I play piano. I like to orchestrate like strings and synths and that kind of stuff. Um, so it's kind of cool to like hear a song that I've listened to forever in like a different way. And it's funny cause um, during the pandemic, one of my songs lose it all, which is like a, like a hard rock song. I was listening to it and I originally wrote it like more so on a, like a piano orchestration and then I thought about like how I kept covering everybody else's songs. And I was like, how would I cover my own song? Like, like an orchestra, like how I'm doing everyone else's. And then I released Lose It All Reimagined, which is just basically me covering my own song. <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> now, did, did the covers, did you start with covers and then say to yourself, I mean, I can do this. Let's, let's, let's write my own music. Or did you kind of dabble in both? So I started writing my music first. I think I recorded oh. the, my first song when I was like 17. Oh, wow. 17 or 18. Um, it was for a short time on iTunes. And then as I got older and like, was like, maybe I should just take these down. <laughs> 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 they weren't bad, but like, I was 17, 18. Yeah. So could have been better. What were they uh, about? What? What were they about? The songs? Um, one of them is called Control that I really like. To be honest, I kind of want to like revamp it and make it, you know, better. <laughs> but it was about just saying how, you know, sometimes things in your life you can't control, but you just have to kind of like push through it and make the best out of it. Yeah. So I don't think meaning, I guess. But, you know, I sounded like a little theater kid singing. So <laughs> it's like, maybe I should pull this. But yeah, so then I started recording like Alex or whatever. Um, what was it 2017? So. I had been doing covers that I was releasing first and like actually taking it like seriously and putting it on YouTube. So I did covers and then I started doing my originals and now it's kind of a cluster of both. Right. Now, have you been able to use the, um, the covers to attract a broader audience and then kind of bring them in to your own material? Yeah, definitely. Um, so that wasn't an intention at first. I just genuinely had fun covering things. And so it's cool when the band members of the songs that I cover either like repost it, reshare it, or just like comment on it. And then I do sponsor those posts. So 
there's different like ways to sponsor posts. And I always do the people who like your, like your page and, and like them or whatever, something like that. So it basically will attract people who are following, like the people I'm following and whatever. So it's not just like random people. Um, it's a little bit more like targeted, which maybe that's how you found me. Yeah. But um, yeah, no. So, I mean, it's definitely, I've like, um, people will be like, oh, like I found you because of like this cover that you did. And then I checked out yourself and like, it was awesome or whatever. So that's always really cool. And I hear that people came from something else that I did. So it's just networking and fun. Yeah. It's funny how it's like, it wasn't like a strategy of yours, but it could definitely be used as one. Yeah. You know, I was just having fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever works. Right. Right. Um, and with that being said, what's, uh, what, uh, does the future hold for what, what's you know, that, now that we're kind of out of the, the pandemic, uh, fingers crossed, hopefully monkey pox isn't going to be a real thing. And, um, hopefully once we enter the fall and winter months, um, you know, the cases don't, well, at least the media doesn't tell us that the cases are going up or whatever it might be. I want to get into that, but I don't even want to look at the media anymore. No, it's terrible. Nothing it's good. Terrible. Comes from <laughs> no, it's so bad. It's so bad. I don't even know what to believe anymore. I really don't. That's, that's, that's the scary part. I don't like, I don't want to be one of those like conspiracy theorists or like whatever, but I mean, I think it just got to a point where like no one is telling the truth. Everyone's just has their own agenda, which I think it always was, but it just got really worse. So. But do they like forget that the internet exists and that way, you know, that, you know, if they say something in 2000, you know, 20, like we can revisit that and say, you said this two years ago. Now you're saying this, like, I don't understand. I genuinely think some people are just so narcissistic that they just don't care. That's a good point. But you know, most people are like, well, I'm going to call you out on it. Cause we know, and then we just avoid them. Yeah. Like, oh. It's so bad though. <laughs> it's so bad. I hate it. I got to fight one time with people. Cause like I, in my mind, I'm like, you know, people who are in, you know, in politics and leaders of the, the, the country and leaders of or, or whatever it might be like, I feel like we should be able to trust them, you know, whether it's a boss or whatever it might be like, we should be able to trust them and they should be guiding us and not lying to us. And the person, I, I think I made something, a post about, about that. And like, well, you know, you have to do your own research and you have to like go into it and, and, you know, kind of, you know, do your research and find the right answer. And it's like, no, I shouldn't have to do that. I don't have to go to school. I, should, I, should, I shouldn't be lied to. Yeah. And then the worst part is like, if you do your own research, it's like, there's just so much BS on the internet that like, you can find something to prove whatever point you're trying to make. Yeah. So it just gets to the point where like, I don't even know, what's, you know what it is. I just, I wake up every day. I'm alive. I'm breathing. I can, you know, I just, <laughs> just try to get through the day. Yeah. It's terrible. I, I never thought you know, this is not the uh, America my parents told me about when I was growing <laughs> up. But but what does the future look like for you? I mean, what are you? What are your what are your goals? What are your? So I mean, I would love to tour, but again, I don't want to just jump on any tour. I want it to be like a good, not like a hand me the best tour, but just has you know makes sense. Um, I do have a new single coming out August twelfth that I'm going to announce on Monday. But surprise. <laughs> well, this won't be out until after that oh, cool. comes out. So okay. wait, August 12th? August 12th. Okay. So this will be out next week. So this will be a little preview. Easier. Oh, you heard it here first. Yeah. It's called Serenity. And I'm really excited for this. Okay. Um, and then just, you know, writing more music and trying to figure out, you know, like a game plan basically, but I'd have other songs that I've been writing and I have to just like finalize and probably get in the studio soon with that. I have some more covers coming out. So just definitely a lot of like music till the end of the year. So you're hustling. Yeah. I don't sleep. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. Hey. What uh, can you um, say? What kind of covers you're working on? Sure. Uh, well, one of them that I'm actually going to record tomorrow, it's um, remember too little too late by Jojo. I don't know if you remember that song. Um, if you if you started, I probably would would it's recognize great. it. It's just a little too late, a little too wrong. Yes. Yeah. Okay, but it's like a rock version. Okay. This is pretty cool, and I think I <laughs> I was reminded of the song because of TikTok. 
Um, and then I liked a couple of videos where it's like a lot of throwbacks. And then I think I just ended up on like early 2004, 2005 TikToks because now all of these old songs are coming back. And I was like, wait, this would be really cool as a rock cover. So there might be a, little, a lot of those randomly, but <laughs> throwback. Is that something you're going to stick with is like kind of uh, a rock style? Probably. Yeah. yeah. That's where my heart is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What were some of your favorite bands growing up? Um, Three Days Grace and Breaking Benjamin were like the first bands. And Lincoln Park, actually. Lincoln Park is my first concert. Them and Corn, which is really cool. Um, when I was 11. Yeah. So like I was introduced to Breaking Benjamin, Three Days Grace. Honestly, I think it was I Hate Everything About You by Three Days Grace it was on MTV. And I heard that and I was like, what is this? And then I went down the rabbit hole of all of those bands. And those are like pretty much all my CDs that I have. Like they're just all like, you know, that realm. And I'm still into that now. If you could do like a collaboration with any of them, who would that be? Hmm. Um, well, Adam Gantier has a new band. So he was a right. singer. Yeah. So Saint Sonia, that would be awesome. I would love to collaborate with them. Um, Breaking Benjamin, that would be incredible. Um, or Evanescence. Cool. I like, I think going back to like what inspired me, like just being able to like sing with them would be like, oh, one yeah. day that's my goal. <laughs> let's see. I mean, if Aaron, Aaron, if you're, if you're watching this, if you're listening to this, <laughs> let's go, let's go. Let's do it. it be fun. Um, what were your thoughts when the, uh, when Three Days Grace uh, uh, switched singers? Um, so I was actually a fan of my darkest days that Matt was in. Um, I'd seen them a few times, but like, you know, I don't know personally why he left. I can assume it was just for his own mental health. Um, so like, I can't get mad at somebody for leaving for, to like benefit themselves to like make themselves better. Of course. But like, it was sad. And to me, like Adam is the voice and the writer behind yeah. most of three days Grace's songs. Like that's kind of, like it's still it's weird listening to the days grace now because it's obviously like the orchestration like the music is still like sounds like the days grace but it's just like i always look at it as like a my darkest days three days grace collab now um but the new saint Sonia album or ep is amazing and to me that's like an homage back to like original three days grace but like you know new yeah i always i always say like you can you can replace like guitarists, for the most part, guitarists, drummers. But when you replace a lead singer, that, that's like, I feel like it's, that's hard to like continue on. Yeah. With like that. even uh, Flyleaf, they replaced the singer. They replaced mm -hmm. Lacey for a little bit. Yeah. And like, she was great. I unfortunately cannot remember her name at the moment, but um, it wasn't, it wasn't the same. And I think when it's, when a band is like so iconic, it's hard to, to do that. And there's, you know, those fans that are like, really it's almost like van halen like right. david Lee Roth and sammy hagar there's people that are very like one side versus the other um i think it's always hard and it's also like i'm picturing like as a musician like if i joined a band where like i've auditioned for bands before and i was kind of glad that i didn't get them because i would have changed the dynamic of the bands and i feel like it's, just, it's such a hard thing to do is to replace somebody who already has a name for themselves and like people have an idea of what this, the band sounds like. So I have a lot of respect for people that jump in and are able to like make it their own and just add themselves into it as well as keeping the integrity of the band. Yeah. I feel like the vocals of a band really kind of give it almost its identity. Obviously bands have a certain sound, but I think people and fans, you know, they gravitate towards the vocals, they gravitate towards the, you know, the face of the, the front man or front woman of the of the project and it's like once if they ever change it's like really hard to to like adapt to that what was that band wasn't was a foreigner i forget what band it was like a classic rock band they they tried to replace their singer and he kind of sounded exactly like him which i think was the, the reason they could continue on the way they were it wasn't the same still but Damn, what, who the hell was that band? It was even Journey now. Like they replaced. Maybe it was Journey. Yeah, this is Steve Perry. Is that his name? Like, I don't remember. 
Like Steve Perry. They replaced him with um, the other guy they like found on YouTube. And he sounds like him and he's great. And it's funny. Like, I feel like people are really like opening up to him and they're like, oh, he sounds the same. It's fine. Um, but yeah, it's just, oh, actually, do you know the band Nightwish? Uh, no. So they're, I think they're Swedish. I listen to a lot of like Scandinavian Norwegian metal. <laughs> um, they're called Nightwish and they have like, it's like a like metal band, but they have like a, almost like operatic female singers. Um, they have replaced them. I think they've had like four different female vocalists, but like that band, I feel like whoever they bring in, everyone's just like, yes, we love her. So I haven't really noticed like people hating on that band for having new vocalists. I mean, that's the gimmick though. That's the gimmick now. Like they have to just keep changing it. Yeah. They've been also around for like 20 years. So that helps. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Wait, no, 30. I think since the nineties, how, oh, that was 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? That's oh, terrible. That is terrible. <laughs> we keep saying, like, you know, the way we, we keep talking about, like, how music is produced these days. And, you know, there's really no longevity anymore. And I, and I, in my opinion, I mean, I feel like, you know, we're never going to see another like Foo Fighters or Pearl Jam. Like that's, that was kind of the, maybe the last group of bands that will be able to, you know, finish out their career after they've been together for 40 or 50 years. But after that, like, I don't, like, yeah. it's unheard of. I feel like, well, the, what was it? Hailstorm. So the four of them have been together since like day one. So I don't, maybe the like 20 years, it's been a very long time. And they've always been together. So I see like some longevity in that, but it's like nowadays band members are like coming and going. And then there are some bands where like the lead singer kind of is the band. So there's almost like musicians for hire. So like people are coming and going within the band. So it's like, it's constantly changing, but also, you know, in terms of like social media and the way that music is, is now it's like everything like has to be a hit, so to speak. And I feel like people are so focused on like, just pumping out content versus taking the time, you know, cause like, you know, those older classic songs, like the writing was just, and the lyrics were very like poetic and they were told a story. And now I feel like everyone's attention spans are so like ADD that like, they just, it has to be something catchy. Like no one cares what you're saying as long as it's, and obviously it's always been like that, but I feel like it's gotten worse <laughs> as time's gone on. Yeah. It's, and as I feel like weird saying that, cause it's like, am I just getting old? And you know, now I'm like just out of that demo and it's not for me and I'm just shitting on it because I'm old. But I mean, I think I have an open mind as far as, you know, I, I can appreciate a good song um, being a good song. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, the most amazing thing in the world, but like, you know, I don't even know how to say it. Is it WAP or WAP or whatever the hell it is. Like, like, I mean, <laughs> how is that really a song it's yeah so <laughs> i honestly listened to that for the first time not that long ago because i would hear like clips of it on tiktok and whatnot and i'm like to each their own yeah um, but no, it's like it's, it's not okay whatever i'm just gonna say it. that's not music that's not music the lyrics are very they're almost like juvenile and again things don't have to be like shakespeare Right. But uh, I don't know. Like it's just manufactured bullshit. Yes. Yeah. Pretty you much. Know? I, I don't know. I mean, I get it. It's marketing and you know. But it's funny. And- Again, talking about like getting old. I feel like I'm like a fucking grandma because <laughs> I'll like go through TikTok and like even like um that's not good for you. What is her name? By Olivia Rodrigo. Mm-hmm. Like it has like a Paramore vibe. Apparently, like Haley Williams like helped write it, and like it's fun, it's cute. But now like everybody is doing the same thing, and like there was some song I don't know what it was, but it's basically like a like a nursery rhyme that they just changed the lyrics to, and they're just so like it almost felt like a nursery rhyme, but just like a mean one, and there was like there's no melody. It's yeah. just like yelling at me. It's I don't know. It's kind of like, 
I don't know. There's this weird phase going on where all these kids are like, oh, it's emo. And I was like, that's not, no, I don't know. I just, I feel like musicianship has kind of gone out the window a little bit in like mainstream media, especially. Yeah. And, and whose fault is it? And who's, I mean, who's to blame? The labels. Yeah. They will sign people. Oh, that's another thing. Like, I feel like in the music business now, obviously it's always been like, you have to be marketable, but they just want to take someone that has like millions of followers on TikTok and maybe has like a viral video and they'll sign them, even though they like don't know anything about the business, might not even really want to be musicians or don't have the best, like they're not singers. And that's not insulting anybody. It's just saying that like some people like to you know, lip sync on TikTok and some people are singers and, you know, labels will sign them because they're marketable and they can sell tickets and merch and things like that. And it's just, I think, giving people a very unrealistic idea of like what music is. I don't know. There's like, I feel like it's like a TikTok, like musician genre that's coming out. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. I mean, (laughs) over here. (laughs) No, it, it just, and I think it's, there's so many aspects of life now that like, I don't even know, like I am terrified because I have two kids. I mean, you know, one's like I said, three weeks old. I don't have to worry about her for a little while, even my son, but like I have to raise children in this climate and in this world. And I don't know how I'm going to do it. Um, Because, you know, it's just, it's not just music. It's like, I think everything in the world is just so different. And I I don't even know how to explain it. It's like, uh, you don't live at home with your parents, do you? What? So you don't no, live don't. at home with your, okay. I'm actually at my dad's house at the moment, but I, I have I don't live here. That's fine. <laughs> because what I was going to say is like kids, like, I mean, I moved out of my parents' house when I was 19 years old and it wasn't because I hated my parents. It wasn't because I wasn't happy living at home. It was just like, I want to get out. I want to experience the real world. If I have any issues, like I know that they're there if I need them. Yeah. I remember my dad saying, like, why are you moving out? You have everything you, you ever need right here. And I'm like, that's exactly why I want to move out. I want to experience life before I finish college because I want to finish college and then get thrown out of my ass and not know, you know, what to do. But I feel like these days, kids will live with their parents in their mid to late to 30s or 20s and even into the 30s. And it's like, that's crazy to me. It's just a, it's just a different world. And I'm like, I don't know. I know it's hard um, to live right now. You know, inflation is the way it is. And, you know, just life is hard. But I think we take a lot of uh, easy ways out sometimes. No, yeah, definitely. I mean, I have a lot of friends who moved out and ended up moving home because of the pandemic. A lot of them lost jobs. And, like, times are weird. But, like like you're saying, um, I think some people are just, like, too comfortable in where they are and they're not like ready to take the next step and do it not grow up but just you know be an adult you know um I did live at home for a pretty long time (laughs) until I moved out um but it was more so like I didn't know where I wanted to go I at one point I wanted to live in LA or like Nashville um so that was always a thought you know looking at apartments and things like that there I know some people out there but um so I'm just trying to like figure out what I was doing. And when I, back when I was doing theater, um, I mean, I live like relatively close to New York city to where I could just drive there and it was fine. And then looking for places in the city and it's like, well, that's not even practical to like be by yourself unless I want to live in like a, a closet and I really don't want to live right. in a closet. Um, yeah. So I was just like trying to like figure out life, but I just think in general, like people's attitude towards everything has changed dramatically right. especially since like the past couple of years. So I think, yeah, like it's not just, you know, musically, it's just everyone's attitudes have been a little off, I would say. Yeah. And I'm not shitting on you either. I mean, like at least you were like trying to like figure out what to do and you were making like, yeah. you, you had a, 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 a game yeah. plan and end, <laughs> end goal. Like people yeah. they're just, they're just like, okay, this is, this is good. Yeah. And um, also like, um, like full transparency, like I pay for everything, like my videos, my music, I, like every aspect of Alex I pay for. So also like financially, like it would, 
it made sense to stay here for a little bit because like all of my money that I made was sure. right back into the music. So I like took advantage of that for a while to where I could afford to do that. Um, and do now have an apartment, which is nice. So me and my boyfriend moved out like earlier this year, um, which was a long time coming, but we did it. <laughs> That's good. Congrats. Thank you. And now it's, you know, doing all that stuff. We obviously still need like furniture, but I realized I'm actually very minimalistic more so than I thought because there's like nothing in one of the rooms. I'm like, this is fun. Yeah. Yeah. I will. Uh, when the pandemic hit, I wanted to, I said to my wife, like, we need to start living like, like smaller and like you said, like more minimal. Yeah. And I feel like she heard me say that. And then like four months later, we <laughs> bought a, a bigger house than the one we had. And I'm like, what are we doing here? <laughs> I just got done saying like, we need to like be cool. And well, we're... maybe the bigger house makes things like your rooms won't look as full. So it looks more minimal. Maybe, maybe and we did it for the kids too. So that was, that was a whole plan. But yeah, uh, yeah. During the pandemic, I threw out like so much stuff. Like I remember I, <laughs> I just like boxes of the things. I'm like, I'm going to give them to Goodwill, but Goodwill wasn't open. So in my like dining room, like hallway thing, I just had stacks of just boxes of books and crap and whatever the fuck I was getting rid of. And I was literally like throwing out furniture. I was like, I don't need this. I was also like broken furniture. It wasn't like worth giving away. I was like, this is cracking it. (laughs) Garbage. But yeah. 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 (laughs) It's it's nice getting the, the clutter out. That's for sure. Definitely. You just feel better. Yeah, with the the place we live, the development we live in, I had like a community yard sale maybe like a month or two ago, and um, I have I have a, a problem buying DVDs. Well, I had a problem buying DVDs, but um, I sold a ton of DVDs that day, yeah. and I just felt like my youth and my childhood like leaving one one by one. No, <laughs> so it felt good because I was making money. I was decluttering and and you know kind of moving on with things but also it's like there it goes like <laughs> there goes my junior high life and there goes my <laughs> there are some things like I won't get rid of like in my closet I have like like we're talking about cassette tapes I have cassette tapes in like one of those little pouch things so like they're all they would sit upright I still have them and like I went through and like kept the ones that I you know I wanted like the nursery rhymes and like the, like that shit I threw That's it sweet. but um yeah no I still I'm, I'm a minimalist trying to be, but also slightly a hoarder. So like, I'll have a few things that I probably should get rid of, but I just don't have the heart yet. One day. Hold on to it. Yeah. This closet's full of like. Hold on to it. Yeah. That's just like my hoarding closet. And it's not, a, I mean, it's not at your current living space. So it's fine. Like just let, let it stay there. It's not your problem. <laughs> exactly. And that's in the closet. It's far away. I know it's it. Oh man. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. You're probably very busy. Um, I wish. <laughs> no, you're not busy. Friday night? Eh, no, I'm just chilling. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Pandemic really crushed a lot of things too. Like, just like, there's not like, i not that I go out to bars anymore, but, um, you know, I think bars close here around like 11 and 12 o'clock sometimes, even on a weekend. It's like, I went out one time like two weeks ago around where I live and, we met my friend left the bar and it was like, I want to say one o'clock in the morning. There was like one other bar open. And this is like a strip where there's like bars, always like people walking around. And there's like two people walking around. And I was like, yeah, we're just going to go with the car. It was just really like, it's not, it was not it. Yeah. And now unless like I have a show or something, like now I'm just going to like chill. I'm like, it's Friday night. I'm just going to sit on my ass and watch Netflix. Nice. How have your shows been since things kind of came back? They have been great. So I feel like people are like, you know, back in the day, everyone's like, yeah, like I'll go to the show next time. I feel like now everyone's like, okay, well, shows are back. Let's go to a show. So I feel like people have definitely been more eager to go out, which is nice. Um, yeah, they're, it's been good. I honestly have to book more shows for like starting for like next year. I haven't done that yet, but it's on my list of things to do. You got to calm down a PA. What? Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Like how, 
Where in PA have you played? Honestly, I don't remember the town. Okay. Terrible. But it was like, it was before the pandemic, so 2019. Mm-hmm. I had played a bunch of shows in November, like around like the Northeast area. Um, I can't remember what town I was in, but I would love to do that again. So anywhere yeah, but- I guess you go. Uh, well, I'm just trying to think like, even like where, where I am now, um, like the, the, the venue scene has like, just like year by year has like been diminishing. Um, what, uh, what size venues do you play? Um, nothing crazy right now. Um, do you know like dingbats in Jersey or like, I I mean, like, I don't know. I can't think of like an amount of people in it, but like, no, like small, like clubs, that kind of thing. Nothing like, not like Starland Ballroom or like any of these big places right. yet. Uh, my list of things to do. There's a, there's a place called the V spot. The V spot. Yeah. The V spot. Um, right. It's like, a, it, it's had some like decent bands, like, but it's like, a, it's not a huge venue by any means. And it's, it's more, how do I say it? Um, I don't know. Like but underground. That, yeah, well, it's it's very popular uh venue. Um that'd be that'd be a good spot. I got like the a V spot. Good. The V spot. The V spot. Okay, but with Vinny. Vinny from the V spot. Vinny. I'm trying to think what else though. Like there's not a ton of places to play around here anymore. What sucks. Yeah, that's that was a fun thing during the pandemic, watching every venue I've played at just disappear. Yeah. Um, I used to play Blackthorn 51 in um, Queens. That was like a great venue. I Every time I was there, it was a great experience. And I played there, I think, three, maybe four times. Um, and yeah, they closed. And then um, Revolution in Long Island, I watched that close. I was like, this is great. <laughs> but um, yeah, a lot, I mean, that just wiped out a lot of places. So I feel like there are places I was like, oh, I was going to play there. And then they kind of disappeared. So it's just trying to figure out what's still here. <laughs> but, yeah. Do you have a team uh, behind you that helps book shows? Or is that just you? Is that just you? That's me. It's you. It's awesome. I don't have a team at all. <laughs> it's just me. It's <laughs> awesome. And are you doing the, the music and all that like full time? No, I wish. No? Yeah. Um, I'm a makeup artist on the side and I work at Sephora. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> Which helps a lot when I do like things like photo shoots and video shoots because I don't have to hire a makeup right. artist. Hair. I mean, my hair looks like eh, a little better now, but I can like style my own hair and makeup and wardrobe and all that stuff. So that's one less thing for me to have to worry about. That's awesome. It's hmm. awesome. That's crazy though. It's all all by yourself. That's awesome though. Thanks. I mean, I would love to, you know, eventually get like a booking agent or a manager or someone to like help control me. Cause the bad thing about that is, I know I'm, I'm, I do everything. So it's like, I'll like reach out to some people like, what do you think of this? Or what do you think of that? Um, to get their input. Cause I mean, I don't think all my ideas are that great. So like, I need someone to tell me, no, this sure. is a bad idea. I have a friend who's very honest about that. <laughs> So I'm always reaching out to her being like, yes, no, maybe. But yeah, it would be nice to have, you know, a team at some point. But now is your boyfriend uh, a musician as well or? Yeah, he actually played guitar for me for like the first three years. Nice. Yeah. But he has his own band and his band is like doing super well. So it got kind of like hard to like do both of them when like we'd have shows literally at the same time that happened. The last two shows I had, he had a show at the same time. So it didn't really work out anymore, but. That's probably good though, that you're both musicians because yeah. you're kind of both on the same like clock, so to yeah. speak. <laughs> and also like, like understand the lifestyle too. Right. Like if he was an accountant, you know, like, and he worked from like nine to five and you were out, you know, or vice versa, even it'd be weird. Right. Maybe. I don't know. No, I think so. And like, I just know in general, just a lot of times like relationships, like people, like I have friends that are dating people that are not in the music business. And it's, there's a lot of like people don't understand like the late nights or like the last minute shows or things, I don't know, or like 
understanding that like maybe we can't hang out like every Saturday together. Right. So it's like because we might have a show or also just like being tired <laughs> at the end of it, just being like, I just, you know, I have a day off. I just want to sit on my ass and watch Netflix. Yeah. I don't want to go, you know, apple picking or something. <laughs> but, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. It's just this understanding like all that goes into it and the stress. And then also like just being able to like help each other out like musically and just like with videos and like, he'll, he'll play guitar for me. And then I just recorded a cover for him and filmed it. So it's just like, it's nice. Sweet. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. And I'm looking forward to your uh, next single, which will be, you said August 12th. Yes. I'm excited. That's exciting. Best of luck with that. Thank you. I'm sure it'll do great. So. <laughs> um, and uh, I mean, I, you best of luck with the rest of the year. Um, thank you again for doing this. I really do appreciate it. Of course. This is awesome. Yeah, I uh I hope I hope that uh the next time I uh connect with you you you're you're, you're on tour with like Breaking Benjamin. I would cry. <laughs> I'm telling you. That'd be cool. It's not impossible. It's no. not impossible. Nothing's impossible. That is true. I just got to keep going. So yeah. well, I mean it sounds like I mean you're doing it. You're hustling, you're grinding, you're uh you know constantly recording music you know your own stuff and covers and um you're doing it yourself i mean there's i i strongly believe that like things will pay off for people who you know earn it so yeah. for what it's worth from from <laughs> what a a guy from wilkesbury thinks that's now i take all it. i got so I well if you're looking to book shows in pennsylvania specifically the scranton Wilkesbury area yeah. let me know i can kind of maybe connect you with some people who do book shows for real okay. um i don't do that but i know people <laughs> who do that helps. and that'd be cool yeah no i'm probably gonna reach out to you soon Sweet. i especially in you know beginning of next year i mean i'm not too sure we're, we're what july oh my god we're almost in august it's gonna be august on monday oh no okay it's terrible. <laughs> i mean i love halloween and you know clearly um, but I do would like to enjoy summer when I can, but, um, yeah, so I definitely have to start booking everything for next year. So I will reach out to you. Yeah, for sure. So thank you, thank you again. Best of luck with everything. Um, and I'll talk to you soon. Cool. Sounds good. All right. Thanks. Well, bye. See you.